My name's John McDonald, obviously. Uh, I've been manager here now for 17 years uh, come August. Uh, prior to that, I worked at Glamorangie Distillery for 17 years. So, 30, come, yeah, starting 35 years uh, in the business uh, come August. Uh, my route to management was a very traditional route. Uh, I started as warehouseman, millman, mashman, stillman, assistant manager, and then I had the good luck um, to get the manager's position here in August 2006. Okay. So I'm just very conscious of this furry microphone. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, what I'm going to do with you today is um, I'll give you a brief overview of the history of Balblair, take you around the site, uh, as Sean says, we'll come back in here afterwards. Um, we are going to do a tasting uh, of some of the core range, 12, 15 and 18. Um, none of you are driving, so enjoy. Uh, I won't join you because I will be driving later. Okay, this facility was established in 1790 uh, by a local man called John Ross. Uh, which is not an unusual name for the county of Ross Shire. However, that Ross connection is still very, very strong at the distillery. Uh, I have seven operators here, and if I go through them by name, I have Duncan Collard, Lewis Moore, Alan Moore, and I have John Ross, John G. Ross, Alan Ross, Michael Ross, Julie, who you've seen briefly there, is Ross, my assistant manager, Norman, his middle name is Ross. So if your name's Ross and you apply for a job here, uh, you're kind of halfway in the door. <laughs> so it was run by generations of Rosses up until um, 1894. And then it came into the stewardship of a wine merchant from Inverness called Alexander Cowan. And he ran it until 1912. However, unfortunately, at that time, tax excise duty came into play and his cash flow wasn't enough uh, to keep on going. So the distillery is silent between 1912 and 1948. In 1948, a very entrepreneurial solicitor from Banff called Robert Cummings bought the distillery. And for £48,000 in 1948, you know, if only 48,000. And he ran it very successfully until 1970. However, at that time, he was becoming quite elderly and he had nobody to follow in his footsteps. So he sold the distillery to Hiram Walker, who then became Allied Distillers. And then in 1996, Inverhouse Distillers, or International Beverages, as we're now called, uh, purchased. Okay, any questions so far? A couple of points of interest there. Um, during the Second World War, the distillery was used as a barracks by the British Army and the Norwegian Army and Air Force. And there's some mementos of their time here, uh, which I'll show you in a second. I can give you all this um, by email, so you don't write down every single thing. <laughs> okay. Questions? No. Has this distillery been silent? Yes. Between, the, between 1912 and 1948, uh, it was silent. By 1932, all the stock had been sold uh, just to uh, cover debts. Um, but this is the second site for Balblair. The original site was about a quarter of a mile away from here, but it was moved to this site in 1894 because the railway uh, had arrived, so it made perfect sense. But the water source is still the original water source um, yeah, that we use today. Babla is the name of the place, or Babla would mean something Gaelic? Babla is Gaelic, and it's got two meanings, depending on which Gaelic language um, you're familiar with. Um, when my father was still here, I asked him, because um, he was a Gael, and his first language was Gaelic. He actually had to trans translate. Uh, into English and asked him, he said, well, there's, there's two meanings of it. And one of them is town of the fertile plain, uh, but the other more common meaning of it is battlefield, because there was a battle fought here, <coughs> excuse me, between Danish Vikings and Picts, um, you know, way, way back. And Baal is battle, 
Blair is field. And I always say to visitors, if you're going to come to Bar Blair, don't type in Bar Blair on your sat nav, because there are like seven or eight different Bar Blairs around this area. Because as you know, we Scots were fantastic at killing each other uh, throughout the centuries. So yeah, there's about seven or eight different Bar Blairs round about. And the first sense is battlefield of the second, and the first is Bow means battle. The, the, you mean the fertile plain, the, the other Gallic? Oh yeah, yeah, town of the fertile plain, which encompasses Edderton uh, as well, yeah. How's production changed, John, from over the 17 years from when you started to reproduce the mayor? It's improved immensely <laughs> yeah, <laughs> since I've come here. I think you're talking about the quality. <laughs> that, I, I'm thinking back, you know, 17 years ago, I guess, would be the early years of the vintage releases and, you know, Balbay started. Yeah a new chapter around right. the early 2000s. Well, I came here in 2006 and, you know, the vintage concept was, you know, already in, in, in full flow. Uh, so to be involved with that when I came here was, you know, quite exciting. Yeah. Uh, and in terms of sort of annual production of what, what you're laying down, is, is it similar to 2006, seven? Yeah. No, you, sort of you know, there's a very specific plan of what we fill each year, whether it be first fill American oak, second fill, um, and sherry casks as well. But the, the vast majority is American yeah. uh, white oak. Yeah. And the target of what you're filling in terms of is that similar volume produced every time? So, 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 one more. My yeah. reality is that I always <laughs> want more to get more yield, more volume. The square for your cost at five yeah. down, cost of your producer. Yeah. And you look at the whisky industry just now, it's in growth. And so I think as a business, and certainly a parent company, they like stocks. And so we're in a position of, we're trying to produce as much as we possibly can, so we continue to do so. Yeah. So it's, it's interesting here, John has done high gravity mashing here, but we did it for volume as well as water. So what we've done with high gravity mashing at uh, Bob there has been really successful as we can get more malt inclusion into our mashland, so we've increased the tonnage into the mashland, but the waters remain the same. And so for exactly the same amount of water, we're getting two or three thousand litres extra, so... Well, 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 actually shaved water ever so slightly. And then that's, that's, that's the next challenge. So phase one was we were extra volume to get extra volume, but now it's about reducing the water, so we'll probably save... The last time we did the sums, five percent saving in water, yeah. What you think, oh, 5% is not that much, but actually it's huge when it comes to the whisky industry. And so the driver for John and the rest of the team is, how do we keep driving down water? Because like I said last night, energy and carbon reduction is huge for the industry. Yeah. But the sleeping giant that's going to come up and bite is very, very soon if we don't do something is water stewardship. So I've been an advocate of it since I joined the business and international beverage are so keen to do something about water stewardship. So. Energy is great and we all need to do something to reduce carbon and that's everybody's big cattle just now. But we also need to get in the front foot with water stewardship. So John's already started that here. Malcolm discussed it last night. He's looking at what we do different at only because it's water scarcity. So they kind of go hand in hand. So to answer the question, I always want more volume. I always want better yield <laughs> as what, a business. What, what's, what's the current volume? Like so 1.5 million has been the average of yeah. the last four or five years. Uh, we could, we could put. Now, when I came. It's not been a big increase in like, number of stills or other things no. over that time. No, pl plant wise, it's not plant increased at all. Yeah. Well, we're um, closer to 1.7, 1.8 now, though. Of the stretching after you had 21 months of the thing. John, I'll never commit to this number because it's a hard number. <laughs> no, no pressure, Sean, yeah, no pressure. Well, it was five days a week to seven days a week. Yeah. Well, it was week, but right, when I started. There we go. Then, yeah, it was, yeah. then it was six. Yeah. Uh, and then we did some automation and then we went to seven days. Yeah. 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 1.8 is uh, yeah, the perfect figure. Ah. All going well, perfectly. Going yeah. yeah. And you've got to, and you've got to do that without changing character and quality and all of yeah. that side of things. Yeah. So that's the I guess that's the balancing act. Yeah. Yeah.